Hey guys, Nicole here. I'm in Amsterdam checking out the new Hyundai fuel cell electric bus. So this is a brand new launch and they are doing a road trip around Europe to try to promote the use of the bus. Now, buses are pretty interesting because there are city laws and requirements, regulations for everything. So Hyundai has to try to figure out how this bus will fit into existing bus lines. So if we look at how buses are currently being used, and hopefully boats one day. I Hopefully Hyundai gets to boats one day. So there's just a boat chatting over there. And what's interesting about Hyundai's overall you know, vision for fuel cell is that they want 700,000 fuel cell systems by 2030, right? So this is nine years from now. That's quite a few. And their, their vision is trucks, buses, boats, air taxis, and they're moving into tractors uh, later this year, Tra tractors and trailers, these, these types of things, so farming, right? So their vision is very industrial, which is where there is the most CO2 being created. I mean, we can talk about us moving over to passenger cars, and then we can debate fuel cell electric versus battery electric, but the truth is my carbon footprint driving my car is never gonna be the same as this kind of bus, which travels 350 kilometers in one day. Right, think about that. They do six, if they do 16 loops around your city, that's like one day's work, 350 kilometers. You're not driving that in one day. So if we go inside and just, and just sort of check it out. And so there's a lot of different requirements that they're gonna need to meet. And what is interesting to me is that just, this feels like a normal bus, right? If we kind of take a look around inside, this is exactly what I would expect from an electric bus, a battery electric bus, or the fuel cell electric bus. So what I like about this bus is how exactly it would fit into a traditional city use. So it would make sense if your bus was driving, say, 100 to 150 kilometers inside the city. But once we get to above 200 kilometers, the efficiency of the hydrogen fuel cell, how much energy you can pack in, that's when hydrogen starts to make a lot more sense. So if one of these buses drives around 350 kilometers a day, this would make sense. And if you look at how a city traditionally does its planning, there's room for both, right? It's th this isn't actually an either or scenario, right? It's not, we have battery electric cars or buses and we have fuel cell electric, that one will replace the other. And this is something that in general in the hydrogen debate is a big thing. Everyone says it's either or, but actually it's, it's a marriage between the two. So a bus like this would actually fit in on a route, specifically in a city, where it goes into the suburbs. Right? It has a longer route to go around, say the airport, which is traditionally outside of the city, and then it has to come inside. So we want things where it cost-wise makes more sense, right? And this is something with a much larger route. So this bus uh, has a range of about 500 um, kilometers on one fill, but then this also depends on the air conditioning, right? Because you think about how many people are gonna be standing in here or sitting in here. In the summer, it's gonna get hot. And this can be up to about 30% of the energy created from the fuel cell. And this would be 30% of the power that could be going towards range, all right? So there's all of these different factors that everyone kind of forgets about when they talk about how far does it go, right? And all of this AC is a huge thing. And if you are thinking about getting an electric car, you have to get air-cooled and heated seats because heating the entire cabin is a massive drain on the battery. Now, these unfortunately don't have but air conditioning, but I mean, that's a, be a fancy city to get that. So this is just a quick look at Hyundai's very new uh, fuel cell electric bus. I'm Nicole Scott, I'll talk to you guys soon.